Hey, welcome back to another Sims 4 Max's Friendly Speedville. Uh, we're building a church today, and if the time indicator wasn't enough to tip you off, this is a lot more complicated than the last build. I'd go so far as to say it's the most complicated build I've done in The Sims 4 so far, which is probably why it took me four days and several hours to complete. Uh, right here you can see we're trying to get like, I guess you'd call it like a palette of the different materials and uh, like arch types and stuff and also trying to figure out how to do a flying buttress in The Sims 4 and that didn't really work out so we're starting over and building the front of the church. You can't really do uh, the sort of like nice inlaid door frames that actual churches are sometimes known for. So I did the next best thing, which is just a really shabby looking porch, I guess. Um, there's a lot of compromises in this build. There's, there's only so much you can do with the tools at hand. Uh, like these arches. I really don't like arches and pillars. It's 11 o'clock. I've This is the third time I've recorded this, and unless someone gets murdered in the background of this video, uh, everything's staying in. If I get real thirsty and I take a sip of my drink, you're going to hear that because I can't be bothered anymore at this point. This video has taken entirely too long. There's no, there's no buy a mutant video today, which is Monday. There's no buy a mutant video tomorrow, which is Tuesday. Uh, you can blame this video and also the fact that I'm cat sitting for a family member who is in the hospital. That, that, that also helps. I'm, I'm currently sitting on the guest bed in the guest bedroom and it's very uncomfortable because I'm not used to like slouching forward to lean into a mic while talking and looking at a TV that is entirely too far away. This is not fun. I'm not having fun. I had fun building this but recording this has been a bit of a nightmare. Uh, as you can see we're building the different levels. Churches are known for being very tall something that they like to do is you gotta get closer to God that's what you got the windows for is to let God in I don't know why God needs windows I personally I don't know the man but I don't think he needs windows to get to you I think if God wants to find a way he'll, he'll, he'll make a way but yeah no here's the little uh, balcony for the pipe organ to sit on really wanted that Sometimes you see pipe organs like in the back of a church, especially if it's a smaller church. Um, I'm not too familiar with big churches, like cathedrals or grand churches as they're called. I, 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 I've grown up in a bunch of small towns and occasionally a big city. I've My family is non-denominational. We have Mormon and Baptist and a little bit of Protestant ties. So I've, I've been everywhere, as Johnny Cash would say. And... Uh, I've only been to one cathedral, like a big, big major city cathedral. It was somewhere in Texas. I can't remember the city exactly. And it was a Catholic church. So they were singing mass in Latin and all sorts of weird stuff that I didn't really get. Because Catholicism is weird to non-Catholics. I know if you're Catholic, you probably don't like hearing that, but it's true. Uh, I shouldn't be throwing shade considering I was almost a Mormon. That's, that's about as weird as it gets. And here we have, what is the clerestory? The, the, the tallest thing of windows to let all the light in. Because the light makes you good. I don't know. It's, it's very weird. Like, like, reminds me of my English teachers being like, yeah, no, this is a metaphor for how God is light. And, and how God is holy and he towers over everything. No. These medieval people just wanted to show off. That's what I get from these buildings. This is a gothic revival church, which is to say it's a Victorian gothic church. Uh, actual gothic stuff is a surprise from the 1300s, and if you're an ignorant American like me, you didn't know that. Uh, but that doesn't really surprise me now that I think about it, because the, the goths were from like the 1300s, right? Now, not the, the Sims goths, like the actual goths. Uh, the Goths that we get, the Visigoths. I don't know if the Visigoths were actually like related to the Goths or if it was just like a name thing. Like the the Rus and the Kievan Rus. I don't know my history very well. I'm an American. I'm allowed to do that. 
but yeah, uh, Gothic Revival stuff, aka Victorian Gothic, uh, it fits really well for this pack in particular, the Vampire Pack. A lot of the art and uh, furniture from this pack is very Victorian. So a Victorian Gothic church just makes sense. And of course, there's only so far we can go with Victorian Gothic as a theme for a building like this. We can't get as detailed, especially if we're trying to build something that's Maxis friendly, quote unquote. Uh, you can't get overly detailed. I, I tried putting a bunch of the gargoyles on everything and it just didn't look right. So it's sort of a simplistic, almost modernistic take. Like, like a small town church that's trying to echo themes of larger cathedrals, which is fine. That makes sense. The Forgotten Hollow, like, it doesn't have a very big population. It's like three people between two houses, right? And there's the big old graveyard that's like on the Strahd estate, but you're like, wait a second. I only know one Strahd, and he's been the same Strahd for the past four generations, right? So like, who are those people? And obviously they must be like residents of the town that Forgotten Hollow used to be before it was, you know, forgotten. But uh, I imagine that's why there's a big church here. I can't think of any other reason. And of course, at some point, people stopped going to church because they either moved away or got turned into vampires. And so now you have just an empty church that burned down or was just remodeled. And now it's a nightclub because of course it is. Listen, I like I like Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. I've already stated this multiple times on this YouTube channel. I'm sure some people are sick of hearing it. But yeah, no, these arches. I couldn't use the vampire arches because they just didn't fit right. And they didn't have those nice little uh, railings that the upper arches had. So I just stuck with those. Made them white and black. There's a lot of white and black and then red as an accent color. And here we're doing, what is it, the apps? The, the bit in the back. The bit in the back where all the, uh, the shrines go if it's a Catholic church. A lot of shrines in Catholic churches. I did a lot of like Google Maps stuff. And yeah, no, there's a lot of Marys. Why do we have so many Marys? I remember the one Mary, and then the other Mary that people don't like to talk about. I don't remember so many Marys. I just, I just have the Pokemon theme in my head, but with Mary Magdalene instead of Pokemon. That's strange. Yeah, no, I'm maybe a little bit sleep deprived. I've tried recording this three times already, and things have gone wrong. I might have already said this. If I've said this already, I apologize. But hopefully this time, we'll get it right, and I won't have to record this anymore. That would be the day. And here you can see we're doing the upper level of this sort of back area. There's a word for all this. There's a lot of words in architecture for big important things like churches, like, like the... Uh, the cross pattern at the center it's like was it cruciferum or is it like the design in general it's, it's it's shaped like a crucifix surprise more symbolism except wait no hold on the symbolism doesn't make any sense because the whole cruciferum shape is designed after roman administrative and legal buildings yeah that's what churches are designed after is legal buildings because back in the day you know the romans and the greeks they didn't go to church every Sunday. Like, maybe if you were like doing a big political thing, or you know, you were baking an important cake for somebody, or you were about to go off to war, you would be like, "I'm gonna go to the local temple for whatever god I think will help me, and you know, pray and maybe make a sacrifice." But people didn't go to church every Sunday, so it was like an irregular thing. Temples were these sacred places that people very rarely get into. And then when the Christians were like, hey, we need to like make religious buildings that people go into all the time. What should we design them after? The first place they look is the buildings that people go into all the time, which are administrative and legal buildings. And so that's why churches are designed after those, which I think is fascinating and is a great way to fill time when you have 30 minutes of video to go through. So you can see we've replaced like the, uh, the pulpit area with a bartending area. Why not? I'm sure some people really like that. I don't drink, so I couldn't tell you. I also had a lot of fun with uh, the platforms for these little chapels in the back. 
little shrines to different things. I believe we stick uh, the Forgotten Lady, who I guess could be a Mary in the back. And then we've got a fairy on one end, which could be another Mary. Uh, I don't think the Llama's a Mary, though. I think that's just Llama. I don't know any Catholics out there in the audience. Please tell me if you've ever worshipped Llamas before. I don't get how it's not adultery, but whatever. A lot of fun fiddling around with those platforms. It's about the only fun thing. Actually, it's not true. There were a lot of fun parts, and they were they were tempered by all the really non-fun parts, and also my own perfectionist nonsense, where it's never good enough, and I just have to keep working on it and working on it and working on it. This is how I've spent hours of the past four days. It's it's not great. I, I should probably get help. But uh, in the meantime, enjoy this cool build. to actually doing the upper floor area. So there's the second floor which is accessible and then the third floor which I originally built as a inaccessible area which technically I guess you could get to if you were a vampire or just really good at yoga or something. Uh, but eventually we turn it into a completely inaccessible area that's just roofs that are directly connected to windows so you can look into like the little roof area. That's how they do triforiums. They're like little fake uh, alcoves, just like a, a fake level to put more nonsense in your church to make it look fancier. Uh, the only thing this thing is really missing is like stained glass windows. I don't know if there's a pack that has it, maybe like the romantic garden pack has stained glass, but off the top of my head I don't know of any stained glass, especially none that I have in any of the packs that I already have. So we're just stuck with, I mean we, even if we weren't doing uh, the sort of like challenge build of trying to build something that's Max's friendly, we'd be stuck with not a lot of options. So yeah, now you can see me putting windows directly into those roofs, which saves a lot of space. You can lower the uh, the top height down, which is it's good. Uh, the bottom floor, I think, is the tallest, which is good because that helps skew perspective. It's sort of like uh, the Magic Kingdom or really any building in a Disney park. Uh, you have the upper floors be shorter than the lower ones and then from your perspective it seems like they're taller in general because it being smaller means it's farther away which means it's taller. It's, it's, it's kind of maddening in its counterintuitiveness but that's how it works. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that and I'm sure some people are much bigger into that especially in The Sims but never really done that sort of thing before in this game. Mostly I just stick to doing like starter builds or renovating or just building entirely new homes for my like for my actual like live mode gameplay. I, I don't really do like big complex builds like this. That's that's why this took forever. And yes, that was me drinking on mic. Don't care. None in the slightest. And here we see that I have to adjust everything like three or four times. First, the church is too long, then it's too short, then it's not wide enough, and so I need to widen it. It's just, it's a mess. Even with the nice, like, really useful options that The Sims 4 has compared to previous Sims game, it's still a pain in the butt. I also don't like pillars at all. I probably mentioned that when I first had pillar troubles, but like, they, they don't look good and they get in the way of actual gameplay. People complain about lights. I hate pillars. I also don't like the lights everyone uses. Those like simple, like the, the, the very in vogue, small lights that emit a lot of light. Like, yeah, sure, they're useful and I use them in buildings sometimes, but I don't ever like using them because I don't, it, you, you see a room that's just peppered in those, and it looks like a bunch of bugs crawling around on your screen. It makes me itchy. I don't like it. I'd rather use something that's like appropriate for a room, and it's it's like real lighting. In real life, 
you put lights up high because that's not where people are and that's where they don't look. You put lights up high, you put them behind furniture, or like behind your couch or whatever, because people aren't going to be looking at them. And in The Sims, it's the same way, except instead of putting them up high and behind furniture, you put them on walls and down low, and that makes sense. And that's how I tend to do my lighting in The Sims, is keep it out of the way, but not just, like, cheat it or use the same very basic light over and over. Here you can see we're starting to have fun with candles. Gotta have candles. Uh, it's a shame there's not any like actual church assets in the game. I guess, you know, for all the controversial issues that The Sims has decided to tackle, like global warming, environmental stuff, uh, LGBT issues, like n nothing about religion, huh? That's fair, I suppose. And here I am trying to figure out what we do for the dance floor, which is like basically the main, I think it's called the nave or the aisle. I think the aisle are the side areas, which are where the bathroom and kitchen go eventually. But the, the main area of the nave or narthex or whatever is eventually a dance floor with some uh, commercial music boxes. The ones that people don't turn off and they're playing alternative music because what else would they be playing? This is the most like mid 90s early 2000s emo punk nonsense you know what i mean this, this is confessions from vampire the masquerade bloodlines like i could not get any closer without actually trying to model it after that i'd probably do a terrible job at that now these these screens that block the main like uh pulpit area from the, I think it's called the Sanctuary, which is where the, the little shrines in the back go. Uh, that is sometimes fully opaque, like like a wood screen. Sometimes it's just not there at all, it's just pillars. Sometimes it's like that, where it's little windows. I went with windows, because they look visually interesting. And here you can see me putting in stairs where they're not needed. Because, of course, I need to put stairs over there and not just under the stairs that already exist. It's a perfectly good stairwell. I have two of them. And I do that eventually. Eventually. And yeah. Uh, fitting a public bathroom, like retrofitting it into a design like this, is not easy. But I think that makes sense. You know, like it does feel realistic to have this tiny, cramped, tucked away public bathroom area. And here you can see me building a fence for the cemetery, because of course this place is a cemetery. This is a nightclub, cemetery, and wedding venue, although not an actual church, funnily enough. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's a fenced-in cemetery, and a crypt in the bottom, and then the crypt is also like where the weddings take place, because come on, if you're gonna be marrying some vampires, you might as well make it fancy. Here's my second attempt at the bathrooms. Still didn't like it. It's a little too cramped, although I, I wind up doing fake bathroom stalls eventually, which, what, you know, Sims Team added bathroom stalls with Discovery University, and I have it, but I'm not going to use it because, you know, again, this is part of the challenge here. But why didn't they add any to, like, the vanilla game? They do that. They add, like, important stuff. And here you can see me trying to, like, add some more detail to the pillars themselves, like the little towers. It's just not visually interesting at this point. Uh, but yeah, like, they added the, uh, the hot tub for, like, the anniversary thing, right? Like, the hot tubs were literally in one pack up until then, and now you've got a free one, no matter, you know, if, even if you just have, like, the free base game from that trial, right? You have a hot tub. So I don't know why they don't just add more, or like, they added bunk bags. So add like a really cheap bike, a really cheap laptop, and uh, some vacuum stalls, and there you go. Like, just give people the basics, the bare necessities, as Bill Murray would put it. I originally decided to put a dining room down here, just to fill space, but it's not necessary, I think the space is filled out enough as is, and also I find a better place for a dining room upstairs, although it's a bit of a walk if you want to bring like your, your beer and your chips, but you know, whatever. It's the price you pay for eating in a 
converted church, I guess. I mean, the layout's all sorts of nonsense, but it's it's a realistic sorts of nonsense, you know? Like, it's, it's not just weird for the sake of weird. It's weird because it's this very clearly a building that is being used for something that it's not. Which I think is neat. And here I go again, trying to build another chapel, as they're called. Uh, just a little shrine area. I eventually decide against it, and so I mirror the build on the other side, but instead of the bathrooms, that's where the kitchen goes, because if you have a wedding venue, then you need a kitchen for making cakes and stuff. Um, obviously. You probably shouldn't do that right in front of the mic. I'm too tired to care, to be perfectly honest with you. Sorry about that. And here we're really like trying to get in that cruciferum shape. It's a nice T shape. It's fair. Almost got the roof down. This roof was a pain in the neck. Oh god, these little towers from those little sticky outy bits. Not a fan. Not gonna lie. I don't even remember what I did for this. It's not this, because this is not working. Uh, so I probably, yeah, okay, use something like that. That makes sense. Oh yeah, no, it doesn't per work perfectly, but it's it's good enough. Perfection is the enemy of good enough, as they say. Do some trim. Don't worry, I get it all eventually. You see missing spots, that's fine. Here I am trying out fences to try and add some visual detail to the roofs, because they're very boring and plain. It sort of works, but I, I, it's not consistent, and I don't like it, so I get rid of it. What can I say? I'm a perfectionist. Up until I'm not. Which I think is how perfectionism usually works. Uh, I didn't mean to leave that save game in, but whatever. We're already 22 minutes into recording this, so... And here you can see we're actually in beginning these upper floors, because it's like, well, you don't want roofs on that lower floor just to hit this because then you'd be in the way of the windows so eventually we're like all right well, we'll just make this whole room bigger which is nice you've got room for activities you could, you could play twister i don't know what what do people do in churches that are no longer churches i guess i guess lots of depraved and wicked things that i'm not allowed to talk on youtube about right that makes sense especially if there's vampires there's probably all sorts of nonsense going on in this building Oh yeah, this, this build starts out very strange and it gets more boxy as it goes on, but I think it works. It, it, it all starts to come together eventually. You got these tower areas, which I think those, yeah, no, that tower area stays because we have the, like the cross, the crossing of the roof areas, which works. Here I see that these little octagonal half octagonal pieces aren't going to work because we only have full octagonal roofs and they stick through the wall so I wind up I think I wind up originally I was going to delete the upper parts and then eventually I went with like a mostly flat roof that fits into the regular roofs so that was fun yeah because I went down to the first floor and tried the same thing and they still stuck through in the bar area so I went did that and decided well let's do that on the second floor then we'll have room for our little vampires only vip club which is in like a little is the cloister the, where the choir sits uh if the, the choir is not sitting in like an orchestra pit they're sitting up top because that keeps you away from the common folk you know if you got your monks or nuns they, they don't need to be sitting next to you know joe blow so you, you have like a really low area or a really high area. Churches are weird. I 
here's me fiddling with this roof trying to make it fit. I don't think that room's even accessible. I think that roof blocks it off and I don't realize that until after I'm done recording this part. But uh, that was all pointless. It looks nice, but it's kind of pointless. Here you can see the gargoyles all over. They're alright. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but they do add to like the gothic architecture of this. And you can see I'm starting to get interesting with the windows. I don't like just flat rows and columns of the same window. It doesn't look right. I do some interesting things with the window shapes, which I think work for the most part. And here we are starting on the crypt area, which is mostly copy pasting, which makes sense. You, your average crypt is going to just be the upper floor, but lower. That's just how it works. trying to figure out the actual like color scheme of this build. It's very white with some black accenting. Uh, I didn't put black accenting on the bottom, which I may change. So there may be some changes. I mean, there's definitely going to be some changes. I've already done a lot of work past recording, but it was detail work, so I didn't feel like adding it to this 35 minute speed build video. Uh, that's going to be in the live stuff. But yeah, we use the plaster walls and I think marble flooring. Just very generic, basic textures, really. It works. And before too long, we'll start figuring out that the towers are not big enough, and I decided to make them bigger. Yep, here we go. No, maybe? We're close. It's either that or the kitchen. Yeah, no, here we go. So now the towers are 4x4, four four, which is nice and big. Gives you plenty of room for the... What do you call those things you go up and down? A stairs, that's what you call them. Use a nice black metal stair with the uh, the vampire railings. It works. Looks good. I like how I get to, to hype up my own videos. Hey, you've got like these two bell towers which have, I think have some chandeliers in them and some empty spaces in the top that you can maybe access if you're a vampire. Uh, but for the most part, they're just, they're just there to look cool. There's, there's no actual bells in The Sims 4. I'd like some bells. Is there a gong with a uh, snowy escape? That'd be nice. Just like a playable gong to make noise. Love a good gong. So yeah, originally I put like a little vampire seating area up here. That doesn't stick around. I think one of them is a makeshift painting studio. Like there's some sort of painting vampire, which is very romantic if you think about it. And yeah, here's the new bathroom that I don't think I remember to record. And there's the other tower. But uh, yeah, no, there, there's like an easel. I think one of the unlockables, because the, the default easel doesn't come in black for some reason. Uh, one of the unlockable easels and then some extra like canvas up there just just to fill space there's a lot of like what can I do here to fill space like these here these little like baby face fountains and then some, some chairs Let's just put some chairs here this is, this is the waiting area if you can't you know get seating it's, do nightclubs have seating arrangements I don't know I don't I'm, I've never been to a nightclub I probably have more experience with Catholic churches than I do nightclubs. That's sad. I shouldn't have said that out loud. Oh well. Actually, it's not sad. Who cares about going to... If you don't go to nightclubs, good for you. But yeah, uh, this build is basically just a mixture of, like, the modern and the old. So you got, like, the... Victorian Gothic stuff, you've got the, the chandeliers and the candle holders, and then you've got like these nice modern like 
remodeled kitchens and bathrooms and stuff like that. I, I think it works. It, it mostly works. It could be better, but it could also be worse. So yeah, this kitchen as it stands in this part of the video is awful. There's a much better one at the end. So stick around for that. Like, yeah. Uh, I don't really like the, uh, what would you call them? Standing cupboards? Floating cupboards? The, the ones that go on, like, the wall. I don't like them. They get in the way. Like, they're nice in real life, but in The Sims, they just get in the way. And here's the bar again, because the bar disappears. Expect that to happen again. I don't know why. I think it's something to do with moving the whole build or something, maybe? Yeah, here I am trying to figure out a good distance for moving that and keeping that stairway and then deciding against keeping that stairway in. Now it's just got two entrances, the front one and the left side one, which opens up directly into the cemetery. And yeah, no, the bar's gone again. Top 10 mysteries science cannot explain. Here we've got some very boring windows that I replace eventually. Not on camera though, you'll see them. There's just, there's only so much footage I can record for this. It, it just gets very tiring after a while. Here we're putting some windows in the back of the uh, the chapel area in front of all the little shrines, which is just sort of a thing. I did some touring, and it's sometimes a thing. I don't know. There, I just need visual interest on the walls. A blank wall looks wrong to me, although I, I do wind up deleting some of these very awkward windows that are like really close to edges and stuff like that, like those. Those don't look good. You can see from the inside, it's just a bunch of windows. It's maybe a little too much as far as windows go. And here I am deciding, hey, let's maybe connect everything up together and then deciding against it immediately because vampires vampires need their space sometimes. You know, I, I'm not going to argue for the segregation of supernatural creatures, but maybe vampires should have their own seating arrangements on the bus. That's a terrible joke. That is an awful joke. Why did I have to make that joke 32 minutes into this video? Oh god. I love everyone out there, even if you have fangs. I'm not gonna say especially because I'm not a weirdo like that. But yeah, here we're starting to fill out the, uh, the crypt area. I originally decided, hey, let's put a room in there in that empty space where, like, the uh, the porch area on the rest of the church is. I get rid of that. Don't need more nonsense for me to fill. And of course, you gotta have coffins in a crypt in a vampire bill, right? That makes sense. Some more arches. Went with these because, you know, we're lower down. You need more support. Some urns because, you know, we're down here in the crypt, you gotta have some urns. And I think that bus has been replaced by the Katrina from uh, the Day of the Dead stuff. But I'll go show you that in the live build. And here we are in live mode. It's dark, which may not be the best time. What am I talking about? This is the perfect time to be viewing this. Look at that warm glow. I think it fits right in. The cemetery is all nice and ill-kempt, although there are a few little offerings here and there. And then if we head down to the main floor and through these doors, we have the dance floor, which is all checkered tile, and nobody else other than me seems to be dancing, but that's alright. Everyone seems to be hanging out in this stall for some reason. Don't ask me why, that's Sims for you. So here's the bar. Looks a lot more like a bar now. That's nice. You can see what I was talking about, about having this 
whole thing. Uh, this all works fine. People can view the art here and get inspired or whatever. People will use these and these. Uh, nobody's going up here yet, but I'm sure if you were to ask people to come play poker with you, they would. You could get to the, uh, the organ really easily. There's some dining and seating if anyone really wants that. It's the vampire stuff. Uh, I haven't seen any vampire other than Vittore. Yeah, that one. And she's walking away. I don't know if she's actually going to be a part of this. Why does this guy got a bike? Travis Scott. Why does that not sound like a random townie? Is that like a university character? Is that why you've got a bike? Anyways. So yeah, this, that's what this part looks like. Uh, ignore the missing two curtains that would not place no matter what. I don't know what happened there. That's The Sims for you. Uh, here's the fully modeled kitchen set. And there's the fully modeled bathroom set. And down here, you can see you got your crypt area, you got your your coffins, which aren't on a platform as much as I'd like them to be because they just take up a bajillion space for some reason. You got your wedding chairs, you got your wedding arch, and your, uh, your officiator. He's very happy to be helping you with your wedding. And then you've got some spots for urns back here, you've got a Katrina and some... Day of the Dead stuff, because let's face it, I ran out of things to put in here. But overall, I'm I'm reasonably happy with it. Would I have liked to have done better? Yeah. Do I want to spend any more time on this? No. Mm -hmm.